In the last video, we went over how to set up the NAT, the Network Address Translation, or the Universal Plug and Play. Now, if you do go to the NAT and you enable the UPnP, you hit Apply to Save and you hit Refresh, and the UPnP status stays as inactive, that would suggest that either the router does not support it or it is not turned on within the router. So then manual port forwarding would have to um, supersede the NAT setup. So in this case, you want to go ahead and uncheck the enable UPnP box, hit apply to save, so now that's turned off. Then you want to go to more settings up at the top. Now under more settings, you have your three ports that need to be open, your server port, your HTTP port, and your RTSP port. Again, covering the ports, all three ports are necessary to be opened. The server port is used when viewing your device, whether it be an NVR or a DVR, through the CMS application or through your mobile app, which is Omni Remote. The HTTP port is required to be opened in order to view the device over a web browser. And the RTSP, your real-time streaming protocol, is required to be opened to push through and allow the video to be streamed. Now if you forget to open the RTSP video and you do port forward the other two, you will be able to connect to the device, log in, but you will not be streaming video. It is a common mistake, so again, please make sure you do port forward all three ports. Now in this screen, this is where you can manually change the internal ports. Out of all three ports, the one that is highly suggested to be changed is the HTTP port. Nine out of ten internet service providers block port 80. So in this case, you could go ahead and click the, the field. A window will open and you can go ahead and change this to whatever you'd like. A lot of people like to use 8080. Some use 8100. I typically suggest... 9,000, but again, this field can be used to enter in any number you'd like. You just want to make sure that it's not a common port that's used commonly, or it's not a port that's already been used on your network um, in place. Again, there's up to 65,000 different ports, so the higher you go in port range, um, the less chance you have of running into a port conflict. Okay, by def uh, typically uh, 8,000 is usually open and available. Again, it's not a common port, um, and again, unless it's used by another device, you should be safe by keeping it 8,000. Unless you feel that it is used or there is a, you know it's used or there is a chance it's used, you can go ahead and edit that one as well. And in this case, we'll make it 9001. And again, the RTSP port should be open. Um, every network does differ. So in this case, if you're not sure, you can go ahead and adjust this as well. What I typically recommend um, is either adding a 4 after it to make it 5544, or go ahead and add a 5 in front of making it 5554. So now that you've manually inputted the ports that you will be port forwarding, you hit apply, and you will get the attention error. Uh, attention message that the DVR will reboot. Okay, You would go ahead and click yes in this situation and the DVR or MVR will go ahead and reboot. After the DVR reboots and comes back online, you'll notice that now when trying to access the DVR from the local area IP address, which we had set up before as 192.168.20.225, you'd now input colon 9000 to access it on the web browser side. Okay, now that you've actually set up the ports within the DVR, from here you'd have to manually log into your router, and by default your IPv4 uh, default gateway is your router IP address. So typing in that default gateway into the Internet Explorer, you should be able to um, access your router. 
From there, you'd want to type in your username and password for the router. Make sure you have that on hand. If you do not have that on hand, you might have to call up your internet service provider. Um, and if you are familiar with manually port forwarding, go ahead and port forward these three ports to your local area network IP address that you had set up under the general screen prior to. If something did change um, or you're not familiar with port forwarding yourself, this is where you'd want to call up your internet service provider and actually have them walk you through port forwarding. A lot of them, they have their technical support agents as well. From there, you'd call them up and let them know that you need help port forwarding three ports and you'd list them these three ports that you have just set up under the more settings screen and then you need them directed to your local area network IP address that you had set up earlier under general. Once the port forwarding is done, now your port forwarding is set up. If you're using a static WAN IP, then you can go ahead and now successfully connect from the outside world using that static WAN colon HTTP port. If you do not have a static WAN and you do not have a dynamic WAN IP address, that can change from time to time and there is no given time of when it can change, we strongly recommend that you set up the DDNS, which we will go over in our next feature. Now, if you're not sure if your customer or yourself has a static WAN IP address, again, it is strongly recommended to set up the DDNS as well. Um, you, better off not taking a chance not knowing the DDNS service hosted and provided by KTNC is a free service and literally takes all of one minute to set up and we will cover the DDNS setup in the next feature again thank you